Hello and welcome to the Bothering Strangers podcast with Max Hearing. I'm Max Hearing, and my guest today is Detroit Lions linebacker Derek Barnes. Derek, how's it going? Going good. Feeling blessed. Um, getting back to working now, get my body in shape. And, you know, it's a whole 365 day job. So you always got to stay in shape and make sure you're prepared. So make sure I'm doing that in this offseason. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I, I work out four or five days a week, and I'm, and I'm already sitting here thinking that might be too much. <laughs> I'm, already, you know, I'm already like, maybe I should slow down, you know? Yeah, no. It, and it's just, it's a mentality thing. I think that creating habits is, you know, I've been reading this book about habits and, you know, just reading through it and it's very, and, and I just, some things that's very important and just creating a habit, creating good habits. Uh, you know, if you, if you like, if you want to get back into shape and, you know, they're saying like, when you wake up and you want to work out and some people kind of throw it to the side, but like, you know, if you live it, if that's your nature, you know, you kind of just, just do it and want to do it. So I've been kind of trying to live like that lately. So trying to make sure I love working out and not just doing it because I have to. So. Was there are, like, are, are you, was there a point like when you were in college, something where, where you were working out and you're like, I really don't like this, but I just got to have to do it. Yeah. And, and, and all I have to vouch for this, like, we all get to that point in some time, you know, where it's a lot of stress and, you know, it's, you want to be good and you have class and it's just like so much showing you and you want to relax. And it's just like, ah, those 6 a.m. workouts, like I'm tired. You want to, and then you just some, like I have to do it. And sometimes that mentality is, it can't, it's not always negative. Like it's not always like, damn, I have to go work out. It's like, oh, my body hurts. You know, I wish I didn't work out, but I'm going to go do it because it's going to make me a better player. So it's not always negative. I would say it's a negative and positive thing, but it's just on how you take it. So. The my body hurts part, that one, that one hits hard. Like I, I went to the University of Kansas and, you know, not a football school, but they have a football team. Right. And th- those dudes always looked like they were in pain when they were walking on campus. They, they were walking really slowly. It just looked like everything hurt. Yeah, I was actually at Purdue today. Just got into working out probably about an hour ago. And, you know, so many guys that's like, and you talk to the and I talk to my shrimp coach. And I'm just like, what, what are the guys doing nowadays? You know, I'm one year out. Um, are you guys still doing the same thing? And it's just like, it's funny because in college you had all these mat drills and these stations and all this conditioning and, you know, you worked out super hard and you had max out days every week. And it was NFL is just like more like rehab, more taking care of your body, more stripping those small muscles. That's very important that, you know, we never knew about It's It's so different. And, you know, and it's an expectation. Like, they expect you to come back after offseason and be in shape. They expect you to have to be strong. They expect you to, you know, have to take care of your body, eating right. And, you know, in, in college, it's like when you have that little amount of time off, it's like, I'm just going to go BS everything. I'm going to go eat what I want to eat. I'm going to go – I'm not going to work out. Like, I might jog here and there. But it's, it's, it's just a totally different atmosphere at the next level. You have more time, though, don't you? Like, I mean, I, I, I always hear some NFL players, like, one of the hardest transitions I often hear is when they from college to the NFL is that you have all this time that you didn't have because of classes and everything that you had, you had in college. Sort of, I would say sort of, kind of, honestly, because when I got there, you got to understand, my whole rookie year, I, I was doing football for a whole year straight. You know, you go training in January, then you combine prep and, then you, I had the senior bowl. Then I had pro day because the combine got canceled. And then mm. you're still working out because then you have to go back to rookie mini camp or be in shape. You have that. You have OTAs. And after OTAs, you get like three weeks and a half, maybe. And then you still have to work out because you have a conditioning test. So it's just like you're just constantly doing stuff, constantly trying to stay in shape, constantly focus on the football, having meetings here and there. So it's just like, and then you go into the season. And this year was a 17 season, 17 game season. So it was like, it was a lot. And now it's just like, I have this off season and, you know, couple, first couple of weeks, I'm like, I never had this much time off whether I was in college or like, it's, Ever. It, at the same time, it's, it's a blessing. Like I think it's, it's very good for the players, especially playing, you know, all year and rookies, you know, if you listen to this, it's, you have to push through it. You know, it's going to be some times where you hit the rookie wall, but you have to keep fighting. And, and that's what comes with it. It's the cost of doing business. I mean, well, I mean, you guys are really well paid to do business, so. Right. Yeah. There's so something to be said there. Yes, sir. So uh, I want to talk about the NFL honors um, at least a little bit because, yeah. uh, I, I, you know, you, you're a rookie. 
you weren't a starter for most of the season, so I'm sure you're well you were you you were well known in Detroit, are well known in Detroit because you play in Detroit, but I feel like you have a lot more fans now because just to give a little context, the NFL Honor Awards happened. Uh, Andrew Whitworth on the LA Rams won the Walter Walter Payne Man of the Year, which is like an award for like community community service, and then he told a story about you as a kid. Right. And you can give that side of the story as well. But what what's changed since you know you you got this shout out on this huge stage at this award show? Well, I can say just just going back um, when I was younger, you know, me and my dad actually had this conversation the other day, and we just talked about how when I was super young, and he, you know, he asked me where I want to be when I get older, and I told him I want to go to the NFL, and I've had that same dream since I was maybe five years old. The day I touched the football was just like this is what I want to do, and I was a running back growing up. I wore number twenty one. I played for the small league Chargers, and LT was my guy. Like LT, like I played for Chargers, he was 21. I was running back, he was running back. I was like, I'm going to stick with this. And I stayed with that number my whole career. And, um, you know, then you get, just kind of get older and then, you know, come from Covington, you know, there's a there's there's not much going on there. And it's just like you have to fight your way to get out of there. And, you know, I have know a lot of people who haven't made it out of there. And, you know, not to talk down on them and everybody has their own paths. And just for Whitworth to even come, because we had, I go went to the Rogers Dress Club almost every day. Uh, it was just after school activity that I love to do. And, you know, I was active and, you know, you could go play basketball, play football, you know, get tutored, get help with homework and, you know, just play pool, just have fun. And, you know, and also you get free, get a free meal and stuff like that. And, you know, mom's was, my mom was working a lot. And, you know, I was like, that's just we, we are me, where me and my brothers always win. And, you know, just a good experience, like having the Bengals players come down there and, and talk to us. And it's crazy because out of all players, like I don't remember any other player but him. And it's crazy because, and I kind of say that as in it because he spent a lot more time with me. You know, he spent a lot more time with not just me, other kids too, talking to football, talking to us and helping with homework, just the small things. And, you know, I looked up to him and and I can't believe, like, at a young age, I don't even remember anything at a young age, but that's one of the parts of my life that I do. And, you know, we end up playing the Rams this year, and I'm just like, man, hey, that's Andrew Whitworth. Like, I remember you from when I was, like, seven, eight years old. I was at the Boys and Girls Club. You would come down there, and, and it was nothing. Like, I was just, like, didn't want it to turn it in. I was just like, man, like, I'm honored that I get to play against you. Like, this is crazy. And he was just starstruck by it. You know, he was like, this is that's unbelievable. And then my media people reached out. The, way, the Rams media people reached out to my media people and they had just a small story on it, just something that was just small, nothing big. And, you know, it kind of just faded away for a little bit. And then, you know, I get a call from my agent, you know, me and my girlfriend took a trip to Marco Island in Florida and I get back and my agent's like, hey, call me first thing in the morning. So he calls me. This is a long story, by the way, but it's, it's very interesting. It's, it's crazy. Keep, keep on going. Work out. And we end up, um, so I get the call and I'm like, I'm like, What's going on? He was, I'm thinking it's something serious. He's like, it's one o'clock in the morning when I got back. So I'm like, he's, there gotta be something. Plus he's from Las Vegas. So it's probably like 10 o'clock there. But I'm like, you know, it's late up here. And so I've called me first thing in the morning. So I did. And he's like, hey, I need you to figure out a way to get to LA either tonight or the first thing in the morning. You know, Whitworth is up for the men of the year award. And, and you know, they want you there. And they, they just, they want you to come out. And, and so I'm thinking, okay, I just, I'm just going out to just to support him. You know, I was, you know, just that small piece of his life, you know, maybe he just wanted me to be there after the story. Like, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. So end up catching a fight out there with my girlfriend's dad, uh, who also, you know, always has my back when it comes to stuff like this, makes sure I'm on top of everything. Kind of like not my manager, but he just knows, uh, knows a lot. And so I brought him with me and, you know, we get there and it just get there at 10 o'clock and the event is, the event is at three. So I'm like, this is going to be a long day. Cause you got a five hour plane flight and we get there and, you know, took a nap. I woke up, got a suit on and, you know, got there. And it was crazy because L.A. traffic is crazy, by the way. And I'm pretty sure you know that. <laughs> I'm, in LA every, I'm in L.A. So, every weekend. I know it. So it was really like a 20 minute drive, but it took us about 45 minutes to get there. So we get there around, I want to say, 345, 4. And, you know, we go to the red carpet event. We walk up to the gate and everybody has these passes. I'm just like. We don't have a pass. And I'm like, so they told us to go to this deck thing, get the pass. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to get a ride in the golf right down there, get the pass. And I'm just talking, turning back, talking to a, a guy that I knew. And um, 
he hands us these two passes. Like and he looks at my girlfriend's dad, like you must be plus one. So I'm I'm thinking like, oh, they know who I am. Like they got my tickets, VIP. You know, I'm feeling good. I'm like, okay. So we go on the red carpet event, and you know, we meet a bunch of bunch of people. Uh, it was amazing. You know, they had the open bar, they had great food, and I'm just like, this is gonna be this amazing. And the weather was phenomenal. Like better than Indiana is free right now. Looking outside is is raining ice and it's it's just crazy over this way but no it was a good night and then this is the funny part this so we we end up getting the tickets and we go in and we can't find it says c3 so i'm like all these say 102 this and that i'm like i don't know so i asked one of the workers i'm like where's c3 and they're like, oh you're actually inside a box so i'm like okay that makes sense you know we're kind of special guests so we're well that makes sense to being in the box so we go in there and the whole invisalign corporation was in it like the owner the ceo and whoever was i was invisible like the, te- the teeth company yes the people who were sponsoring the, the sponsored honors and the honors yeah. so we go in there and there was a bunch of the guys that i think they may be probably not the ceo but they worked for invisalign and we're in there they're taking pictures you know love me and, and hug me and give me all this love and i'm just like oh this is where we're supposed to be and so we're enjoying it we're eating appetizers watching it and if i this key is so funny it was, it was crazy and I just happened to look down at my phone and it says, Derek, why are you? We've been trying to look for you for the last 30 minutes. I'm just like, I haven't got any calls, texts. And so the NFL or the people who are dealing with the whole NFL honors comes down and grab me and Kylie's and being my girlfriend's dad. And we end up going down to the floor and we're just like, we're on the floor, whatever. I was getting, getting awards. And I'm just, I'm like, this is crazy. Like, like this, like I'm, I'm important part of this. Yeah. Part of the honors, like I'm on the floor. Like you have to be very certified to be out here on the floor. And it was crazy. And then they just kept coming to me like, hey, Whitworth might, you know, Big Whip might say something about you. You know, the cameras might be on you. So don't don't be wondering why the camera's on you 15 minutes. And the cameras were on me like 10 minutes straight. It was just like me and then Dick Prescott and me and freaking, you know, TJ. Like it was just like back. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is crazy. And he gets up there and gives that speech. And it almost brought me to tears. It was unbelievable and i didn't even know any of that would happen you know i just kind of was going with the flow and just honoring and blessed like i really didn't care about you know the fans that i and i, I love to have fans and i love the, the support and you know i didn't ever think i was gonna gain anything from that and you know i was just blessed that he even mentioned me mentioned me inside that speech that was awesome and one of the best friends i've ever been around and just ever since then just i have gained a lot of you know a lot of people who are now watching me a lot of people who support me and i love that and i'm humbled to say that i'm, I'm blessed by that so you you just had no idea. You're like, oh, he might say like Derek Barnes, and like that's it. Yeah, not, like, not 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 give the whole story to like what you did, how you like went up to him after a game and talked to him and kind of made it aware, made him aware of what he did. Right, and he was. Uh, it was crazy because you know as he was going through the speech, I'm just like, me, I was just maybe he just like he invite people and they get to sit on the floor. So I'm thinking that throughout the speech, I'm like, wow, this is the major speech. Like he's, he's speaking facts. He does. He yeah, has done some for community. So I didn't even think anything about. I think that was just going to be the end. And then he just keep going. And he, then he says, there was this once, this, once he said this, there was this once incident, this one, this one incident that happened this year. And I was like, oh, wow. He's going to say, he's going to say something about the, the moment that we had on the field. And, and he did. And it was just like, oh man, wow. It was, it was an unbelievable moment. I didn't, I had no idea. They were just saying, hey, get to L.A., and they'll take care of you when you get there. All right. I'm there. <laughs> it's crazy. When uh, when Andrew Edwards said he, when he said something, like, in the speech, like, and I didn't recognize him, and I was getting really nervous, that really spoke to, like, my social anxiety. When it's, like, when someone, like, comes up to you and you're like, I don't know who you are, right. but, but they're acting like they know you. I, I really felt like that was me in that moment. Right. No, it's crazy. <laughs> like, I, cause, and it's true because, like, how could – all the kids he worked with, all the kids he, you know, cared for, you know, show love to. It's like, it's so many of them. So you can't really remember somebody who was seven years old. That was 20 years ago at the beginning of your career. So, of course, yeah. it's hard to remember. And and it's crazy. Like, now, like, you get the picture and it's like, oh, wow. Like, that's you. Like, <coughs> it's unbelievable. And the fact that I remember it is just a blessing. Like, I'm glad I got to share that that moment with him. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. That's, it sounds... I mean, the, now that you gave the whole story, it's like it gives so much more context. Like the yeah, scenario that like, you didn't even know he was gonna like mention you like that, you know? At all, at all. It was, it was, it was, it was a blessing. How was it sitting next to you know? You mentioned Dak Prescott, T.J. Watt, and for the, if you're not an NFL fan, these are you know premier stars in the league. Right. Like, how, how was it being in that kind of company? 
it was a motivation for me. Um, you know, I kind of took it to heart a little bit because I'm a guy that likes to strive for more. And, you know, throughout my whole college career, like nobody really mentioned me. And I didn't care what people think. You know, I'm, I always had to prove myself. And it's just like I've always wanted to be in those type of awards, wanted to win big awards, you know. And that was just a motivation for me, like seeing all those guys who worked hard and, you know, got mentioned that was at the end of the time, has got invited for awards. You know, I just want to be a part of that one day. And, you know, I want to work hard enough and, and, and prove everyone that I, I deserve to be there. And, you know, it's just and – and I just take it day by day. You know, I know the guy has big plans for me, and, you know, I never doubt that. And I just want to continue to keep on working and continue to grow with the Lions. And hopefully we can be in the Super Bowl one day. And, you know, we're, we're working towards that. So I'm excited. Like I said, it's just just motivation, you know, and all those guys definitely deserve to be there. So I have some questions about the Lions because mm-hmm. you were so you were dressed. You, this was your rookie season. Uh, you were a fourth round pick. Yep. So you still have to prove yourself as a fourth round pick a little bit, you know, to kind of for sure your, your worth. And fourth round picks do get cut sometimes. Yeah. But beyond that, um, you guys went three thirteen and one this year. Mm-hmm. which is obviously not, you know, what you want to do. Right. But it was a rebuilding roster. Um, you had a couple of games where just like – you had one game where Justin Tucker, the Baltimore's kicker, hit a 66-yarder. Like, you know, you had, you had a couple of unlucky yeah, instances you, where you, you, could had, you could have six wins, you know, and, and that really would have not surprised you because you just had a couple endings that really right. just – you know, stuff happens. Yeah. How do you stay motivated, though? I guess as a team, but really you, like how do you stay motivated when you're on a team that's, that's, that loses as much as you guys lost this season? When you recognize the talent and, and the great guys around you, you kind of don't really focus on a record. You kind of focus on building something. We're building a foundation. You know, we have amazing coaches surrounding us. We have people who care, care about us, wants us to succeed. So honestly, like that's what keeps me motivated. Like I know that every guy in the locker room, every coach, and staff is is willing to fight for each other. You know, that's one thing we take pride in. You know, if you go back and watch the games, like, you see that we don't give up. We continue to fight no matter what the score is. We continue to fight to the end, no matter we're up or we're down. Um, and that's what just – what we bring to the table. I mean, like, we're I'm surrounded by a good group of guys and guys who want to win. You know, things happen and only makes you stronger. So that's what keeps me motivated, honestly. You know, I'm, I'm blessed and beyond blessed to be around the guys that I'm with now, so – and where does it start with, like, your coach, Dan Campbell, your head coach, Dan Campbell? Um, he just became really likable this year, like, to the fans because, you know, he was coaching a rebuilding team and saw these expectations. The lines were not really super high, but, you know, he just showed that he cared and um, believed in, you know, like, I guess like a, a long-term rebuild and a culture of winning. So where, like, where, what was his impact on the whole team with how he acted and how he kind of treated you guys as his players. You see just his emotions. Like, honestly, like with, with him, he just cares about the guy so much, the players. Like it's unbelievable. And like when we lose games, he don't want to, he doesn't come to the locker room and, and, and when he gets mad, he's getting mad because he wants to win so bad. He wants to win for us. You know, he, he said, he always tells like, you guys deserve to win. Like you guys put the work in day in and day out, and he's you know, and he's emotional about it. And and a guy that can show that emotion, a guy that you know cares about the guys around him and cares about everybody, everyone's else's success is, is unbelievable. Like he doesn't really focus on himself. Like of course, he, the better himself, he can better others. But you know, he does anything he can to allow us to win and allow us to succeed. And you know, that's why I love the guy, Coach Dan Campbell. I, you no, know, fell in love with the guy when I first met him. Like he's a phenomenal coach. Uh, one of the best coaches I've ever been around. And I'm beyond to call my head coach, honestly. And, you know, he deserves it. He deserves the win. And, you know, we fight for him. You know, like we we see how much he cares, see how much the other the coaches and staff, how much they care, and we just want to win. And, you know, some, they didn't go our way, but, you know, we're, we're building. And uh, it, st- it starts with a foundation. And I think that next year will be a total different change with us. And I believe that deeply in my heart that, you know, we, we bring something to the table for sure. So, You think there's a new era? of coaching now like in the nfl where it's a little bit more um, emotional a little more compassionate like i mean me personally i'm a i'm a chargers fan and they also have a first year head coach and he and like dan campbell their their coach uh coach daly 
he showed more emotion. He showed more like compassion towards players. He showed more compassion towards the media. Just to show that he was a nice guy all around. Do you, do you think there's a new era of coaching coming in where it's just like a little bit more uh, kinder? I think so too. I mean, you know, I've, of course, everyone has heard has heard the the stories about coaches, you know, getting to people, getting on people super hard, or yelling, cussing, doing this and that. And some people take I, me growing up personally. That's how that's how I was coached. Like I always had a coach. Yeah, uh, coach that yelled, this and that, call you out your name. Like that's just where I grew there. I grew I grew up in, which is like that. So me, when I get that, like I don't really react. Like it doesn't really change because that's how I've been my whole life. And you know, I think it's changing because like in order for a guy to go to battle with you, he has to be able to trust you. You know, a guy that knows that you have his back. That's the biggest thing. You know, if a coach ever, you know, brings down your confidence, like you don't you don't want to go out there field and fight for that guy. Like you know, you don't want to – so it's just – that's just – it just comes with it, you know, especially with Dan Campbell. Like, you, we see how much he carries. We see how much he wants us to win. You know, why not go fight for him? Why not go show the world, you know, what he's all about, what we're all about? And, you know, it's just – I think that's what it comes down to, honestly. Like, coaches are starting to understand, like, if I want to get guys to fight, fight for this team, you know, like, you have to – they have to gain your trust. Like, it, is, it just doesn't come with it. Even though it's a business, like, nobody here to make – relationships and things like that. Like, of course, you build relationships with the people that you'll be around for a long time throughout the NFL. But other than that, like, it's a business. Like, it's about winning. Like, and whatever you can do to allow that to happen, is you'll, you'll be able to do it. And I guess that's with showing love and care for your players. So, Yeah. Um, I'm curious, what, did you have a, a welcome to the NFL moment this year? Yeah, I would. Yeah, a few times actually. Uh, back in college, you know, I used to just like bully like offensive linemen, and you know, I was, like like really though, and that's just like not not with cockiness or anything, but like it was just like I was strong enough to do that. And you get to the NFL, it was just like once these offensive linemen get on you, it was like you're done, like you're out of the play for the rest of the play, like. And that's why coaches always preaching to me like you got to use your hands, got to use your hands. Was well, I've been pretty good at coming through college, but it's just more to it, especially playing offensive linemen who are <laughs> as fast as you it's just unbelievable the, the the amount of athleticism these linemen have nowadays but that's that's been a wake-up call for me um, was there one specific instance that was like whoa like i gotta this is this is not the same as college you know this is this is way different this is way harder the running backs the running just, backs are very dynamic like it's, it's unbelievable because i can like I, and I, I can get back into it you know that just come with experience come with knowing what you're doing and and, and training and, and things like that was just these running backs are so dynamic. It's, it's unbelievable. They all have speed. They all stiff arm. They all are power running. Like, it's, it's unbelievable. And you just have to know what you're going against. And no, but it, that comes with, you know, everybody at this level is is a above average athlete, if not way more than that. You know, this is the top, the best of the best top in the world. So, you know, you have to, you have to bring it every game, every day, no matter what it is. So. And it is your job as a linebacker. It often falls on you to, to take down the running back. For sure. So Definitely. That's, that, that's, that's Definitely. some of the matters. Yes. Uh, would you say that you're under you're, – you're six feet tall. Your weight, it's said 238. I don't know what you are now, but on the web, mm-hmm. it's at 238. So would you say – are you undersized for your position? No, not at all. I would not – no, I would – no, not undersized. I've seen plenty of plenty of good linebackers, you know, at my size and with strip that has been successful. You know, it's it's not really about that, honestly. I mean, a little height can help, I guess. I don't I don't know, but I've played against big guys. I played at the top elite level in college. Like it's people can say what they want to say about being undersized, but as a linebacker, you know, I have enough, I have enough weight. I'm strong enough, I'm fast enough to play that position. So I would not say I'm undersized. I, I really asked that because I, I didn't know the answer. I mean, do you think hand size is a big part of playing a position like linebacker? Oh, for sure. I mean, I would, I would, it depends. I mean, you use your hands so much as a linebacker. Like, having good hands, having big hands is, is, is really – luckily, I got blessed with having huge hands. But other, like, other than that, like, I don't – as long as you don't have peewee hands, I guess. I mean, it's – use your hands a lot. Like, I think quick hands are very important, too, if you know how to get off the block – you know, shock and share, you know, that's pretty important. I mean, but, you know, I think that the whole, 
you know, size thing and the whole thing of how long your arms are. I mean, it plays a big factor. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, if you're a ball player, you're a ball player. If you can play football, you can play. You know, nobody can really take that away from you at all, in my opinion. So, uh, A couple years ago, I, I, I met Denzel Perriman, who is pro Bowl for the Las Vegas Raiders now. But I was on the Chargers all the time. And I shook his hand. This is before the pandemic, so it made sense at the time. And I shook his hand, and we're the same height. So I'm seeing eye to eye with this man, and his hand just engulfed mine. <laughs> just completely overtook my hand. I'm like, how do you do that? Yeah, it's unbelievable, man. It's, it's crazy because you the NFL is like – you see some of these guys, and they have freakishly, like, long arms or big hands because, like – They got like something. Hands, like, my hands are, like, not, like – your hands are big. Super thick, but like they're really like I have like huge hands. And I've really never met anyone who hands were as big as mine. Like I had one, it was his name was my head coach in high school, his name Bruce Kazerski. Played for the Bengals, was there with the last Super Bowl. Uh they played like a long time ago. And and his hands are like his fingers are probably about this thick. Like three of my hand fingers put together is huge. And it's just like I have big hands and I can't even like grit. It's, it's unbelievable. And he always tells me, like, just the impact I had playing offensive line. Like, my hands just flat, and I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't know. I don't th- I think so. that, that doesn't sound right to me. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. I was like, no, nah, I don't think You can just have genetically big hands. Like, that's a real yeah. that's a possibility, For you know? Sure. It's, like, sure. it's, like, it's like Kawhi Leonard, you know? Like, and they just say that he has just these ginormous hands. Yeah. Born with them. It, all, it always made me mad because I was a basketball guy. Growing up, and like I was never gonna dunk the ball, like regardless, but I wanted to palm the ball. Right, can't do it. <laughs> the, I got blessed to be able to be able to palm palm the ball, but I, I've been palming the ball since I was super young, and it was just like you said, genetically, my hands were just big, so I was. It's unbelievable, man. Growing up and just seeing how your body changes is unbelievable too. How are you? Are you a good hooper? I, I can hoop a little bit, just a little bit. Everybody thinks because I'm big, like. And muscular that I can't hoop, and I'm just like every time I get on the court, I just surprise them because if you're an athlete, you're an athlete. That's what yeah. I say. And in pickup basketball, athleticism does take you pretty far. Oh, for too. sure. So it's like you can like make up for like I don't I don't know your game, but you can make up for like a bad shot just by you know layups and dunks, pretty much. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not that, but yeah, yeah, my game. My game was getting rebounds and blocking blocking shots and stuff like that. I was that was my game. I really wasn't a huge shooter. I get layups, dunk the ball here and there, but, you know, I wasn't one of those cross you over, pull up, none of that. I was like, either you, I knew one thing, you weren't getting a rebound over me. Yeah. And you, were, and you, and you, and I was blocking every shot. So, and I was, it was fun times. My high school ball was fun. You played basketball in high school? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. It didn't say all that on four years. Media. Yep. All four years. Ran track. Ran State track. Yeah. Yeah, state champion in, in uh, shot put, through disc. Um, yeah, basketball, track, football, that's about it. I think, yeah, I was all right, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Since you brought up the other sports that you played, um, what skills, like, do you think you learned? I, I, I've heard track is a really good sport for football for players. Sure. So sure. I, you can talk about basketball, but I'm assuming this is going to have to do with more track. What skills do you think you learned from either sport that has really helped you with football? Speed. Speed? I would, yeah, I would say speed helped me a lot. Just form, just knowing how to run, uh, you know, and I think that really helps. Like, and I was always active. Like, when I went to, um, like, when I went to college, I knew, like, I didn't really – well, when I went to high school, like, I, I wasn't like, hey, I'm just going to run track to keep – to keep me, you know, ready for football, like help me with football. I just did it because I was an active kid. But then you get older, you get to college, it's like, wow, that really helped me. Like now I really, I have speed, you know, it's just the proper way to run. Like, and I think that really helps. I think track is very important, especially when you're in high school, because it just helps you a lot. Muscles, you, you use muscles that you would, that you never use, use in football, and it just helps you become a more ap- a better athlete in football also. It's just, it's unbelievable. Just being active is, is great, you know. No matter what it is, playing baseball, soccer, like all those things matter. It, it sh- in the NFL, I, I think it really shows in the NFL because pretty much all these guys up until at least high school were playing a bunch of sports. And most of them, including yourself, I see were playing sports in high school. And 
you can see right. those skills. It's like Odell Beckham, soccer. Mm-hmm. Man, that man's like quickness, like that. That just doesn't come with that. Right. Like if through life, you know, At like you, uh, Patrick Mahomes, he was a great baseball player. You know, like like he was thrown in the nineties. That's a yeah, teenager. Crazy, unbelievable. But yeah, that's why that's why I was saying it's interesting. It's like the NFL, like those skills, they're so they. If you really pay attention, you can see them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I wanted to I wanted to get your thoughts on the halftime show at the oh, Super Bowl. Man, I bring back to the old days, man. 50 Cent used to be, <laughs> 50 Cent, 50 Cent used to be one of my favorite rappers for some reason. Like he used to be like he was great. Yeah, man, it was unbelievable. I don't know why they're trying to make fun of him. Like he's just above God. He's big now. He deserves. He's not big. He used to, he used like, to be skinnier though. The, the, the yeah, light. he was skinny, but I mean, shit, that's what money do to you. Eat better. He's like he's, like, he's, he's, also, he's also like forty five. Like you exactly. can't, you can't like, expect him to, to be that skinny at forty five when you were no. at he, thirty or whatever. It's not like he's musk. It's not like he's fat either. Like he's just a big muscular yeah, guy. He's like, he just look, he's huge. But but no, nah, man, that was. A phenomenal performance. I was like, "This is cr- this is probably one of the best Super Bowl halftime performances I've ever seen." Just the fact that just the people that they had, like Dr. Dre, um, Eminem, what's his name, uh, Snoop Dogg, Dog, Mary, Mary J. Blige, Blige Kendrick Lamar, like that. Just that right there is just like that's a whole different, different. Like if you just, us uh, unbelievable. Like just all of them together, like. like and all of them are like popular. All of them have hit songs. All of them has been top of the board. Like it's unbelievable just to bring that in. And they all did an amazing job performing. It's crazy. And there's so much, and they're like 50 and plus, and they're still doing, can do this, can still perform. Mary J. Blige can still sing the way she did. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. And I really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed it. Couldn't miss it. Once I, once I seen who was coming, who was doing the halftime show, I was like, yeah, I won't be missing this. Usually I go to the restroom or something. I was like, nah, I'm watching every little part of this. It was crazy. Yeah, I, oh my god! I did you feel like it was short? The halftime show. I mean, I don't think I didn't think it was. I really didn't think it was that short. Honestly, like I think it was just it was a good enough time. Good enough time. I think so because usually, you know, like especially for like the guys who are playing is like regular season. Like you get maybe so they start the clock right after you get off the field. So when you get in the locker room, you maybe have about six minutes. To go over things with your coaches, get hydrated again, and you're ready to play. That's a lot, like that performance plus the other time. Like that's a good. That's that's perfect time. Perfect time for me. I I initially thought it was short, but then once I put it together, I'm like, oh, it was six artists who or seven, whatever, who did about one song. I'm like, that's 15, 20 minutes right there. Mm-hmm. It was about yeah. I mean, we we all know Eminem songs are long. Yeah, super. <laughs> they, that's what he said. They are. They are super long. That's funny. That is as, funny. As someone who listened to five separate Eminem songs yesterday, just by chance, not by design, they're <laughs> all they're all long. Yeah, all oh, his songs long, but good though. You no, they're great. Yeah, they're, they're great. great they're great for the gym. Oh yeah, I mean, I, mean, I used to listen to Eminem's. Uh, I listened to Eminem songs when I was like in high. In, College, right before every game, it was like just the words he said. He just just getting me so hyped, man. And that was one of the best. Man, he's a legend. He's I think a it's legend. his anger. It's his anger that does it for me. Like, the words are good, but like it's just like the like it's like the way he approaches song. Like you're angry, good. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. It's yeah. make, it makes me angry. Right. Yeah. Let me let me go lift some heavy weights now. <laughs> he's a good performer, man. I love him. Now. He, Plus, he's he, from Detroit, so and I drop past eight now every every morning. Every one I, I dropped that is the ex is crazy. Yeah, I I, di- I didn't even think about that far. Yeah, and Indy's from Detroit. Mm-hmm. So have you have you been involved in the um like community service side of things as a rookie too? Like the way Andrew Whitworth was. So this season, this off season, um, you know, of course we did like the food drives and stuff like that. But I was I was so like. And this is on me. And I've always, like, even when I was in college, like, I did a bunch of community service as far as, like, food jobs like that. Rookie year was hard for me is because I was so focused on trying to get better and so focused on. And we only had, really, if you think about it, we had one off day. And those off days uh, for me consist of maybe getting treatment or maybe getting, you know, 
maybe trying to study the playbook some more and stuff like that. But one thing I wanted to focus on the off season was getting back because me and my coach are actually setting up a camp for kids back at, you know, where I'm from is where I met Andrew Whitworth and, you know, and just hearing this story just makes you want to do so much more. And, you know, and sometimes people, we can get, we all can get so selfish and not realizing what we have and what others don't. And it's just, it just really opened the eye for me. You know, I've always been, you know, a guy who wanted to be that positive figure in, in, in the community, especially for me. Cause like, even when young guys reach out to me, like over social media, you know, some guys don't answer and I'm just like, man, like this one response could change somebody's life. Like you never know. And just, that just always been me. I care for a lot of people and, you know, and I just want to do more, you know, and that just really opened my eyes. Cause hopefully one day I can see him on stage and get my story and just follow his steps. And, you know, he's just very, very inspiring to me. Very inspiring. Well, all in time. And you got, I mean, rookie year, you know, you got to like prove yourself too. So I feel like right. maybe rookie year you focus on just like getting your spot. Like you, you weren't a starter at the beginning of the season. Right. And you, and you end up starting six games. Mm-hmm. So in your case, paid off. Um, I have a couple serious questions here. And if you like, don't have the knowledge or if you don't like want to talk about it, or just like not, don't know too much about it. That's fine. But the NFL is a 70% black league. Um, they've, not done well in terms of hiring black coaches and the Brian Flores lawsuit is opening up a lot more of that mm-hmm. situation as well. And just um, for those that don't know, Brian Flores was the coach of the Miami dolphins until he got mm-hmm. fired this last year. And then he opened up a lawsuit about how at one point owners of the dolphins offered to pay him a hundred thousand dollars per loss. So they could get a better draft pick. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? I mean, obviously if, if it's true, we don't know, but I mean, have you have you witnessed the disparities? I haven't really looked into into like anything like that. I mean, you everyone can say like, yeah, there's so many Caucasian head coaches, so many Caucasian coaches. There's not a lot, but you know me, I, I've always been like that guy that just like really never paid attention to anything like that. Like, and you know, I love my people, and it's just like you don't know what what the situations are. You don't know, you know, people can have this misconception of what's going on. And, no, I, I really try not to – I've been a positive person my whole life, so I always never try to look at the negatives about things, you know, and just looking – it's kind of hard because I really don't ever really pay attention to any of that stuff. And, you know, it's, and I, I've heard about it, but I just never really dive deep into things like that. And, you know, and if it is true, like, that's, that's crazy and just should be served. But, you know, you never know, man. It's, there's, it's a lot to it. Like I said, it's a business, you know, there's a lot of stuff behind doors, closed doors that people don't know about. And, and you know, it's – and if bad is being done, you know, definitely I wish things would be – should be – I think things should be fixed, you know, if that's – if the situation is. But we we just never know. You know, it's just kind of hard to speak on that because when you have little knowledge of it, it's just not not in my place. Yeah, that's fine. Um, do you think players, like – like – it, they've made it very public in the NFL that, you know, the NFL is 70% black and they're, and they're historically very few black coaches. So that's been a thing they've talked about like mm-hmm. in the media a lot. Right. But do players, is that a big thing on the players radar? Or is it just like, we're here to play and like, we just want a good coach. Me as a player, like that's basically what it is about me. Like, like I can't say like, I will prefer a black coach. Like I just like not be, that's not never been me. Like I don't, I just want a coach who cares and loves me and respect me no matter what my color is, no matter what my background is. Like, I just want to, we just all want a good coach. Like we just want somebody that know we can depend on that's going to care for us. It's going to understand where we come from, understand our background, understand like our culture. Like it's not really too much about color or who's with this color coach. And this is just, just that if the coach understands and, and, and me as a black man, like, like a Caucasian man is not really going to understand where we, what we deal with. Like, and that just comes what it is, but if people are like, if you have a coach that's willing to listen, willing to express and, and being your side about things and understand how you feel like that's all what players want. Players just want somebody they can trust and know that and want somebody that know they're going to have their back. So, you know, that's, that's really just my opinion. What do you think is the role of the coach? Like at, at this, at the NFL level, you know, because like in high school, it's about, you know, obviously football, but it's also about like kind of growing, like like guys were to be like good good people good men and then in college there is still some of that what do you think how do you think that changes once once they get to the nfl 
like at the NFL level. I mean, <laughs> it's a, a business. business. You know, everybody has everybody's you know chasing after that after one thing, and it's to win. Won a Super Bowl. People want to win, you know, whatever it takes, honestly. And and like they said, like I said, it's a business. You're not really there to, you know, develop relationships. You're there. Coaches are there to help players get to where they want to go, to succeed, to take care of their families. And, you know, players are there to help to win, you know, leave a legacy. You know, it's, it's serious. Like, as, as much as people say it's a kid's – at the end of the day, it's a kid's sport. Like, if you think about it. Like it's a kid sport, but it's 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 very important, you know, and it can take you a long way. So, you know, people take it as that. People take it very serious, and you know, I try to take it very serious. And but I also remember back my mind, like it's a kid's game. You gotta have fun. If you're not having fun with your job, like you, if you don't love it for you don't love it for what it is, and you just love what comes with it, then you'll never find that peace in the sport you're playing. So I kind of just got kind of live like that. Just kind of go out there and play and play the sport I've been playing my whole life. So, do you think there are a lot of guys that, you know? view it like the way you just said like where it's they don't look at the fun side and they, they just they do it for like the money the status the fame that type of thing do you think there's there are a lot of guys out there in that boat yeah i mean i'll be personal i don't know but you know it's you're always gonna have people like that no matter what what they're in whether it's a business whether it's you know sports like media like nobody like everybody you have people like that people's gonna be like that and you know but at the same time, is that if that if that is what drives you to be successful, then so be it. Honestly, like I, I don't I don't see any negative in someone, you know, liking the fact that he can that they can they have a lot of money. The fact that you know, and like, and if you want to be famous, whatever, and it comes it, it comes with all of it. And it just once again, it's just a different side of it. Honestly, like, and that's what drives you. Like I'm going to work hard because I want to like, make this amount of money. Then let it be and you got people like i just love that i just love getting better i love success, being successful like i'm just like i love working out i love doing this and i'm going to do continue to do that in order for me to get to where i want to go you know it's, it's two different sides from that the only reason i ask is because uh draymond green on the golden state warriors who is in the nba is known as like an ultimate competitor right oh yeah he went on a podcast and said that he thinks about 85 percent of the league of the nba is in this boat where like they're not really they don't really love basketball which to me, I'm saying 85%, that's damn near everyone. You'll be surprised. Like, honestly, like, and, not, and being in like this, like the, the pro industry, like you'll be, you'll be surprised. Like it's, a, it's, it's, it's quite a few people, you know, that that's why there's only quite a few people that are Hall of Fame. There's quite a few people that are at the NFL, like, because it comes back and I think it comes back to haunt you, you know. If you don't love the sport, like, and, and you just it can, it can drive you crazy, and so you, uh, you wouldn't be you, you'd be surprised about how many people do it for for that reason. Honestly, you'd be surprised. It, it's a lot of money. It makes you know, money, yeah, and, and and money makes people do things crazy, crazy things. So yeah, for sure, right. no, it makes sense. Um, I've, I've just forgot to ask this question. How many calories do you think you eat during the season per day? Whew. I mean, we got weigh-ins every every week, so it's kind of hard to to even put a lot of calories in your body. But how about a week? Oh man! So probably about two or seven days a week. You probably I probably do about three thousand to three thirty five hundred calories a day, maybe during the season because how much you practice in. And oh wow, doesn't sound like that much though. Yeah, it doesn't like it. it it's not because guys eat healthy throughout the season just to keep their bodies intact because it's a long season. It's not college. It's not 11 games, 12 games. Just, <laughs> you got five more after that. So you have to really take care of your body. So guys are really – but it, but guys do consume more calories during the season because you're constantly burning it off day by day. So it's like you can consume all of these, all this food, all these nutrients and eat more because you're just going to lose it the next day. So I think that you're – like me, I try to eat – like I, I'll eat more during the season. But healthy foods, of course, not nothing bad, like McDonald's or nothing. But, like, in off-season, like, you kind of need to watch it because you can, you know, for me, my body type, like, I could gain weight super fast. And it's hard to – and but I can lose weight super fast, but it's hard to keep that – the weight that I lose to keep it at that spot. So I have to constantly watch what I eat, constantly, you know, be on top of that. But – and some guys are different. Some guys can't gain weight, but they lose weight super fast. Like, and some guys like me just – can't keep the weight off, but, you know, have to really focus on what they eat and the things they're eating in order to keep that weight off. It's, it's crazy. And plus, we don't want to get fined for it. So we do anything mm. on our to eat right. So it's, it's, it's not cheap at all. I'll tell you that. 
team, man, they they can find you for anything. These teams, anything. like 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 they could just look to be like, he looked to me the wrong way. Fine, you know. Yeah, literally though. Yeah, like, I know. It's I say it as like a joke. But it's not really a joke. Nah, not at all. Because you do get fined for some crazy stuff, man. In the NFL, it's, it's unbelievable. No, it's in the NBA is the same way. They, they both these leagues will just find you. Oh, they, yeah. can. they they can. I don't say they, they can. gotta get their they gotta get their money back somehow. I mean they they pay us so so much money, so you have to they have to give it back to us somehow. We gotta they pay, have to. I don't know, they pay you money, but like it's mark it's market rate, you know, like it's mark like this is th- this is my thought process because because a lot of people say, Oh, like athletes get paid so much money. Yeah. But it's because but the market it comes, the, it's, it's because the market it. dictates that like amount of money. It's it's not them getting overpaid, it's because like you're an accountant and you make this much. That's how much the market dictates. And these guys get hit for a living and they make this much. Like I don't... exactly. It's a price, man. It's cost of doing business. I'll tell you that. Like, a, like I said earlier, like it's it's a lot more true. And people think like, oh, athletes have it, have it good. You don't know, man. We bust, we bust our tails day by and day in and day out, man. We playing the most dangerous sport ever. And it's just like you yeah. being an athlete, like we do so much that is unexpected that not a normal human being can take like we do it's, it's a lot man and i think that anybody who makes it to pro level deserves to be there because it's way more to it than what people think it's not just the the nice cars the nice houses the this and that like all oh, that stuff was worked for like we had to bust ourselves to get where we wanted to go too so and it's not like i mean people look at the nfl because obviously that's that's league where you hit and you know concussions are more, are more common but even in basketball and baseball like you don't hit per se but your body takes beatings just from like the working out so it's so it, every sport has their different things and um you're a linebacker so of all the positions you're doing a lot of the hitting for sure you know so i mean i don't know what the what the average length of a career for linebackers but i know it's one of the it's on the shorter end yeah it is of, because yeah. of that no, eh, it's a little it's it's yeah it's more of like four four years four to five years four to six years but that's the average you know for a linebacker you know but that comes with it you know being the same healthy is very important that's most important our body is is the most important it's availability so are you trying to i mean i don't know you're only okay so you might not be thinking as far as are you you trying to be one of those guys that just has like those really long like a really long career oh for sure if you get in the if you get in the NFL just to have a just, just a couple of years, you know what I mean? You don't, I don't think you need to be here. I mean, I think it's everybody goes to have that longevity, you know, the long, the goal is to have a long career, not a short career, you know. And, That's true. It's true. So I always ask people this question. Um, okay. Well, last couple of guys, at least. What is the best piece of advice you've ever received? And what is the worst piece of advice you've ever received? The best piece of advice I ever received is it's not really advice, but it's just a saying. It says, What have you? This is a what have you done for me lately company, organization. What have you done for me lately? And I took that to heart because, you know, like, and that's where people mess up and get cut off because, like, you haven't been doing anything that is allowing the team to win. You haven't been, you know, whether that's missing beings, whether that's not performing, like it's a, what have you done for me lately type of league. And that's how you keep your mark in this league, like making plays and, you know, being accountable, you know, working hard. Like what have you done for me lately? Uh, the worst piece of advice someone ever gave me. That's tough. That's a tough uh, question. That's why I ask. I, I, that's a tough question. I couldn't even answer it myself. So it's not like that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a, it's a little that's hypocritical tough. on my part. The worst piece of advice. The worst piece of what, what's a what's a really poor piece of advice you ever heard? Let me let me reframe it for like that then. Ah, oh, that's hard. Um, I, I don't know. I can't answer that. Okay. I have no, no, it's okay. It's that's it, it, that's a good. You know what? That's crazy because I'm 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 gonna hit you back. <laughs> I'm gonna try to. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm, let me know. I'm like, definitely gonna think of something to think of, think of about. That's a good it'll question. come up when when you're not even ready for it. Man, but well, you're not oh, ready yeah, for it. Like, that, ah, that was a horrible piece of advice. I could think of some bad piece of advice, but like the worst one, I couldn't even tell you. Like, like we've all heard, especially yeah. in hindsight, we've all heard something like that's horrible. 
Yeah. Like, that's bad, you know? But uh, the worst one. Yeah, no, I can't. I don't even that. know myself. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's why that's why I asked. It makes you think. And it's normally the action I get. Typically, people have to really, like, reflect Good. on it and stuff. Well, Derek, I, I appreciate you coming on and educating me on the NFL. No, oh, I never, really? I never played football too, so I don't know like that stuff at all. But uh, I was a small kid. I should, I shouldn't have played football. No, it's fun. I really appreciate you having me. Honestly, man, it was, it was fun talking to you. Really. Thanks, man. I, I hope I, I hope asked the right questions. Oh, for sure you did, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Man. Thank you for watching. Um, oh, sorry. Where, where can we find you? Should like on oh, Instagram yeah. or anything like on that? Instagram, sorry. follow yeah, me. Uh, underscore Derek Barnes underscore. Uh, Twitter is Derek Barnes twenty one, and I don't have a TikTok, so not, not don't yet. Make fun of me. <laughs> not yet. Don't make not fun yet. of me. I don't have a TikTok yet, so yeah, yeah. And really enjoy you guys. Thank you. Give us time. All right. Thank you for watching. Thank you to my guest Derek Barnes, and uh, everyone have a good one. <laughs>